Welcome, everybody. This is uh, Umbrella Corporation, Arizona Hive. Uh, he's cosplaying as... Wesker from Resident Evil Code Veronica. Nice. Very nice. See, you have your logo up there, up top. <laughs> so, um, how did you discover cosplaying to begin with? Well, personally, I actually discovered it in 2011. My friends were telling me about these events you can go to and dress up, and uh, it was really exciting. And uh, obviously, I was a huge Wesker fan, so I just threw one together and joined. But uh, it wasn't until 2012 that um, our Umbrella Corporation Arizona Hive, our founder, uh, Donald Pease, he actually um, got inspired to put together his own custom-made Umbrella Corporation soldier, and he went to an event, and everybody was like, oh, that's a cool OC character. And because of that, he said, you know, I should expand. I should um, I should make this into something. And yeah. so he decided to make a cosplay charity group, and here we are. Nice. It's always fun to find uh, cosplay charity groups out there that are uh, willing. And I just realized we'd have to change the... Woo! Umbrella Corporation. There you go. Change the name. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Uh, Make it fit the, your character. Yeah, right. You got you to change the name there. Umbrella Corporation. Uh, we still had Superheroes <laughs> Unlimited on there. Okay. So. Uh, okay. What, what was your first cosplay then? Sorry, you broke up there. What was, what, the what was your first cosplay? Um, well, our first uh, first cosplay was, um, well, personally, mine was um, obviously Wesker. It was a different one, though. It was just one thrown together, a bunch mm -hmm. of uh, a bunch of uh, dark uh, black pieces I could find at Goodwill. Mm -hmm. It uh, wasn't really of anything, honestly. It was just a, it was a mess. And honestly, that's all how a lot of cosplayers start. They start with one that they just threw together, and it's a mess. Um, but yeah, that and our founder, he started with uh, his own custom um, custom soldier that he put together. He actually had a a lot of airsoft gear, a lot of really professional equipment. So his looked really legit. His was nice. um, was very nice. And so, yeah, obviously his looked like something. His looked like one of the those really cool uh, soldiers from the live action movies. So that that would be way the very the very first one for our, our organization is if, uh, if I get technical on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So what are your next three or or next event that you guys are hosting? Of course, right now we're in. Uh, <laughs> We're in Corona time, uh, so it's kind of hard to do any charitable events right now. Um, yeah, well, it's, uh, it's not that. Uh, it's actually not as bad as uh, you'd think. Uh, we still find ways to make things happen. Um, Umbrella Corp. We every month we try to you know meet up on Zoom and have uh, meetings with each other and stay connected with each other and you know nice. keep the family uh, keep the family strong. But um, as far as next event that we have. Hopefully it doesn't get canceled. <laughs> as long as it doesn't, it'll be uh, Phoenix Fan Fusion. Of course. It's our next big one. Yeah. yeah and then the, we just did one today. It was a very simple. Uh, it was a very simple, a uh, cosplay parade for a young boy who was in the hospital. And so we. Uh, very nice. So you guys did, did a parade. Nice. Well, that's pretty cool. It's awesome. So do you work with uh, Children's Phoenix Hospital out here then? No, no, we're. Uh, our charity that we that we sponsor is the Arizona Animal Welfare League, which okay. is the largest uh, no-kill shelter in the state. That's the one that uh, we're always supporting and raising money for. But uh, we will work with whoever invites us, though. Like uh, this one was just the parents of the uh, of the child who was reaching out to the cosplay community and uh, got contacted by a friend of our group who said, "Hey, any any chance you guys could come this Saturday uh, to today?" Nice. Um, we'll go to anything we're invited to. We have. Um, we have been contacted by people, movie theaters, um, you know, small events, big events, um, you know, fan people who are doing special projects they need the umbrella to be a part of. Our biggest of one was actually Sony. Um, they actually they actually contacted us when the final Resident Evil movie, uh, the final chapter, came out. Yeah. They wanted us to promote it personally for them and hand out posters and flyers and uh, be there at IMAX for the midnight premiere. That was our that was, that's our biggest one yet. <laughs> Nice. So what do you say for those people who, uh, I remember one post, it was, they were showing the COVID-19 lab, uh, and then the Umbrella Corporation logo and how similar they were. And one was blue, one was red. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we, we've seen the memes. We're, uh, <laughs> we, we're actually, we're fans of it. As long, as long as, um, 
Honest people are having fun with that, and they know that obviously there's no such thing as Umbrella Corporation for real, and they're, you know because yeah, we'll we'll admit we're having fun with the memes. We're having fun with the. Uh, you have to. You have to. Make fun of it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, for us, no, we're we're good with that. We never. We we've honestly haven't received any backlash either, which is good. We were afraid we were when we started seeing some of the. Um, fake articles out there, you know, just just trolling, you know, and saying, hey, Umbrella is responsible for Corona. And yeah. you know, we're like, oh, we're afraid some people might take it seriously without doing any research. But no, right, exactly. Happen. Thankfully, we have, uh, yeah, we have a very gracious, uh, we have a very gracious community. You know, we're, we're, uh, we're lucky to have them. Nice. Very nice. So have you personally ever been in any cosplay contest? I'm sorry, you broke up at the very have, last one. Have you time. ever uh, have you ever been part of a cosplay contest for you personally? Yes. As a matter of fact, um, I think it was Phoenix Comic Con 2016 or 17. But um, yeah, one of our members entered um, on our behalf, um, and also to show off his talent, uh, he actually did a cosplay of a Birkin, who is from Resident Evil 2. He was also in the Resident Evil 2 remake that came out last year. Uh, yeah, the crazy scientist with the gigantic eyeball on his yeah. shoulder and the giant mutated body. Yeah, he did it. One of our members built it, and uh, yeah, he uh, he made a whole facial piece. He you know would attach to his face and the whole huge suit he would have to wear, and um, you know the huge muscular arms with claws and stuff. And he did the whole thing. He entered it and he won. Actually, he got uh, nice. first place for uh, individual cosplayer. That's really nice. Uh, so. Um, do you do any of the sewing and armor making and, or wig working for your cosplays or for other people's cosplays? Yeah, that's uh, that's one of the things that makes Umbrella interesting. Um, most of the things that we have are usually tactical gear and things that you can um, find at um, your surplus store or um, or at Goodwill. But mm. we do do a lot of dumpster diving, so to speak. Uh, we do do a lot of uh, mm. searching everywhere. But there are always times when we um, a member wants to do one of the characters from the video games who may be, um, may be a monster. They may be something really complicated. In that case, you do have to build it. Uh, for ours, though, it isn't exactly much as sewing and fabric. It is more armor making, I'd probably say, because it's big prosthetic pieces, big leather pieces, big... Uh, Big masks, uh, big um, big foam pieces, uh, things like that. So I'd probably say ours goes more into armor making. Yeah, that's the good thing about uh, Resident Evil is like the if you're an officer for the Resident Evil, then yeah, tactical gear, you know, and and dumpster diving would be a interesting thing because oh, this one has a stain on it. Perfect. <laughs> you know. Yeah. No, ex exactly. Um, so do you? Um, do you do any photo shoots? And like, if you do, do you like to be on location or do you like to be at cons to take those photo shoots? Oh, definitely location because um, when it comes to us, all of our all of our cosplays um, are more are more gritty and more are dirty and black and uh, armor and military gear and things like that. So mm -hmm. those sorts of things look way better if you can get out to like an old abandoned warehouse somewhere or. Know, some some place with a bunch of wrecked wrecked vehicles in a junkyard or anything that looks apocalyptic um, suits us a lot better. Yeah. So um, cons, I would definitely say, isn't. I mean, we'll we'll obviously we'll take pictures, and if somebody wants to shoot with us, obviously we'll do that. You know, it's the least we could do. But yeah, we definitely prefer location, though. That's yeah. that's how we do our live action fan films for YouTube. It's how we do uh, all of our professional shoots that makes it to our social media, and yeah, so <laughs> definitely location. So are you more of a um, the cosplayer for Resident Evil uh, as, you know, an officer on uh, Resident Evil, or do you have you ever cosplayed as one of the villains? Well, definitely officer, because um, especially now, I'm actually one of the two heads of the group, so... Thanks. Um, obviously we got to keep our cosplays, uh, looking the part, um, uh, in a, in our, in our group, you're welcome to be whatever you want. If you want, if you want to, if you want to, no matter who you are in our ranks, if you want to dress up as a monster, you know, or a zombie or any, any character, you go for it. You know, that's one of the, that's one of the mm -hmm. beauties of cosplay. I think for true cosplay, there's no, there's no, um, yeah, there's no like, um, limitations or restrictions. If you want to, if you want to do it and you can do a good job of it, then go for it, you know, shoot for the stars. Um, 
Uh, yeah, but in my case, my case, I definitely prefer officer. You know, it's like if if you got a lot of responsibilities for a group, then you kind of you kind of don't have time to put on a giant elaborate monster suit. You just want to keep it, you know, keep it to. Uh, it clean keep it uh, looking like an officer yeah it was funny because uh, i was talking to one person at a con one time and they were dressed as an officer from rp uh our our no, i can't remember it the pd Raccoon yeah City PD? yeah rpd uh he was a rpd officer and i was like oh so what do you do for your regular job and he goes i'm a police officer i'm like oh that's funny <laughs> He was a police officer dressed as yeah, a police we, we officer. We do have some law enforcement. Today. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah, we do have some law enforcement retired officers, some guys who are still serving right now. We, we have some soldiers who are overseas right now. Um, then we got some retired retired Army people. But, yeah, we uh, we definitely got some people who know what they're doing in their gear. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so it's always fun. It makes, the, it makes the cosplay even more authentic that way when you know what you're doing in it. Yeah. Um, so exactly. is, is this the character you cosplay most frequently? Oh yeah, absolutely. Wesker's, Wesker's my boy. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's, um, that's the thing about cosplay. If you have a, if you have a character that, um, you love more than any other, that's, that's probably going to be the one you stick with the most, uh, for me. Um, I think it's mostly just because, um, I'm basically the only one in my group who does what, who does Wesker. Um, mm. and also he is a leader character in the games. So it makes sense to stick with him, but um, but yeah, everything about him, I've just been such a huge fan of. So it just basically, it just basically became me in a way, and I just, I just stick with it. It's, it's easy to throw on, it's easy to dye the hair blonde and throw the shades on. So exactly, <laughs> it doesn't take that much effort. <laughs> can, fo can focus more on uh, working for the group and leading them and stuff. So, do you have any favorite cosplayers? A favorite cosplay? What cosplayers? Like famous cosplayers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, so many of them, but um, probably say um, like uh, Courtney Lee Creations, uh, her and her boyfriend Alex uh, Xander D cosplay. They're they make a great team. They get like some of the greatest. Uh, they're all, because they're also a photographer team, and they they oh, get wow. they honestly get some of the greatest cosplay ph photographs I've ever seen in my life. But uh, yeah, Courtney Lee, um, KK Ninja, um, Amber Skies. Amber Skies is an absolute sweetheart, and absolutely mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> well, it's just the been so much fun. Um, Corgi cosplay, you know, Nicole and her dogs, they're just, they're a bundle of joy. And Superheroes yeah. Unlimited, you know, we're yep. friends with them. Of course. Because United, which, you, which you've interviewed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And um, AZ Autobots, Department of Zombie Defense. There's so many names that we've come gotten close to over the years. And if yeah. I'm leaving anybody out watching this, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, if, if you're friendly and, and you and you and your group are all friendly and you go out there to you know, be part of that family, then you're, you're going to be part of it. You know, they're, they're going to, they're going to reach out to you. They're going to say, Hey, exactly. you know, we're glad you're with us. So um, no, it no. happens. But so the, the only problem is you got to keep track of all of them. And so, like I said, we got so many names I could bring up, but exactly. <laughs> yeah, those are just to name a few. Yeah. That, that's the good thing about the Arizona cosplay community is everybody's willing to help each other and they're not like the diva yeah. moment. You know what I mean? Uh, so what are some of the top, yeah, no, no divas here. Uh, so what are, uh, your three top craftsmanship tips that you would offer? Like when making a cosplay, like what, what are your tips? Um, one thing I would definitely say, um, one thing I would definitely say is, um, Get ready for hard work and get ready for it taking a long time because it is going to. No matter how uh, no matter how easy somebody makes it looks, um, it's it's going to be hard. It's going to take a long time. Even even some of the simplest things. If you want it to look just like the character, then you're going to have to buckle down. So definitely definitely put in the passion and the work. Um, another another tip uh, number two. I'd probably say uh, be willing to ask for help uh, because uh, eventually there's going to be something you can't do. Eventually you're going to need yeah. to learn how to stitch something. You're going to have to learn how to solder something onto a piece of metal. You're going to have to do something and you have no clue how to do it. And you don't yeah. have the tools. You don't, you don't even know where to begin. Be happy to ask for help. There are so many cosplayers out there. They're willing to help you. They're willing to do it for free or for, um, or for, you know, a small amount, depending on if they have the materials or not, you know, it's a, it's a big thing. So that would be number two. And um, so, yeah, I'd definitely be willing to ask for help. And number right. three, I would probably say uh, be willing to be willing to go cheap. Be willing to be willing to uh, not go too expensive. Um, you don't have to. 
because you see people wearing like you know these million dollar things that they purchased off the internet it's it's okay There's, yeah exactly I mean, you'd be surprised yeah you'd be surprised what somebody put together with just some paper mache and the you know the the ingenuity of their own wit so you know be yeah. willing to go to goodwill be willing to go to you know walmart and joann's and all those places where you can get things for cheap yeah. it doesn't have to it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to cost a lot to to you know be something incredible you know it's like me and most of my wesker outfits that weren't custom made it's like they were all like 20 bucks or less and mm-hmm. <laughs> you know so uh, yeah, be, exactly. be willing um uh, don't you don't have to worry about it being expensive so that would probably be my third tip yeah one cosplayer saw used everything from goodwill to make the cosplay but the photo they took with that i was like wow phenomenal you know editing is a good power tool <laughs> Yeah, you have no idea. (laughs) So, what what is the worst cosplay horror story that you've been in in uh, in before? It's just like we're like, whoa, that was the worst day ever, or you know, nothing went right that day, or something. Well, for us, uh, I wouldn't say nothing went right. uh, Nothing went nothing went right or anything like that. But I'd probably say our horror story. This, I think any any zombie uh, zombie group like ours could relate to DOZD and mm. Corpse Crew. But, um, a few years ago, um, we used to have a thing. You might you might remember it, uh, Zombie Walk. Yep. Or um, you know downtown Phoenix, they would they would just you know turn a whole block of it into like um, into like a, a county fair basically, and then towards the end of the night, they'd have a huge procession of like five thousand zombies and yeah. Facing after all the zombie hunters like us and DOZD, and it was always a huge spectacle. The news would show up, and it was a huge thing. But um, eventually, it went to new ownership, and that no. was terrible because the new ownership they didn't appreciate uh, all the groups. They um, they heard about DOZD, so they went to them, and you know they're like, okay, we have DOZD. That's 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 all we need, and they forgot pretty much every other group. No, and so sick. DOZD was like, you know, hey, hey, what gives? Where's where's our umbrella boys? Where's yeah. uh, Exactly, these groups, and, uh, it it fell apart. You know, mm-hmm. they're they're uh, they. I think they pretty much only had one zombie walk that that new ownership did, and then after that, they they didn't have the money to do it again next year. Yeah. And it's like, well, I don't have the money, so no more zombie walk. And it it was it was a mess, and all of us were so sad to see it go because that was that was pretty much our biggest of any zombie group. That was our biggest event of the year, hands of course, down. And of course, it's gone. Yeah, I think uh, nowadays with Corona, it'd be. Uh... Scary to do a zombie walk. <laughs> Somebody no, no. like it's finally happening. <laughs> no. uh, we, we we if they if they said it was coming this October, we're, we're like still, we're, we're, we're not good. We're good. Yeah, no, way too risky. <laughs> it's like that. That's not gonna be good. <laughs> um, what is the funniest cosplay story? Something where it's like everything you've tried, it just everybody started laughing about. Oh man, that's a that's a good question. Let me see. Of course, there's probably multiple, but because <laughs> every time oh. you, you know you, we do cosplay in general, there's always going to be a funny moment. Yeah. Oh well, you know what? Yeah, I was thinking about this one. This will probably be. Uh, um, I'll keep it PG because the guy who was involved <laughs> it was pretty it was pretty raunchy, but um, he, um, it was I think it was Comic Con 2017 or 2018, but um. Uh, DC Douglas, who is the voice of Wesker in the mm-hmm. Resident Evil video games, he was attending. So obviously we we met him. We went to his uh, we went to his line, got our nice. you know got got a thing signed, um, gave him one of our you know honorary certificates, took pictures with him. Nice. Um, that was on a Friday. Next Saturday morning, though, when we were still getting ready for the day, we were getting our booth set up. He just walked into our booth, and we we're like, "Oh my gosh, it's DC Douglas!" And, <laughs> He's like, hey, I'm I'm just getting my I'm just getting my uh, I'm just getting ready to sign things and getting our tables together. Uh, but I wanted to let you guys know that my panels tonight. Are you guys gonna come? And we're saying we said, oh yeah, of course, we wouldn't miss it. Mm-hmm. Uh, now DC Douglas's panel uh, is where it, it is. It is rated. It is over PG thirteen. Of course, you're not allowed yep. to go if you're a kid. But yeah. basically, um, he holds on. He holds on to all the fanfics that all of his fans send him. He doesn't throw them away like most celebrities. He actually mm-hmm. holds on to them. And he'll he'll put on like this seventies this seventies uh, style um, sensual point. music <laughs> and then <laughs> he'll, he'll narrate them with a sexy voice. <laughs> and just he'll oh, have members of the, he'll have members of the audience come up and uh, do parts with him. So, nice. Um, 
That's funny. So obviously, I wanted to do it with him because I have to not only do Wesker and cosplay, but I also do Wesker's voice for all of our videos on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I was like, ooh, dream come true. I want to go voice act with DC Douglas. And so he finally he finally chose me for one. He's like, he saw me in my cosplay. He's like, I have just the I have just the one for you. And so I eventually got him I got up there to do it with him. Nice. And, um, it was so mind blowing just being able to do that because um, as soon as I did my first line of the voice, he just looked over at me and just was like, "What?" <laughs> You're like, "What? You sound oh, like me." That's crazy. Yeah, well, no. The whole audience started flooding, and um, it was just it's hard to read those those fanfics though without breaking up though. Like yeah. all of us couldn't even make it through them. It just, of course, it was so terrible. It's so terrible, but the funniest time you'll ever have in your life is DC Douglas's panel. No, yeah, it's funny. So, would you say that would be your best in? character interaction you've had or would there be yeah, one that would you topped <laughs> yeah so um yeah, i would definitely say so it was it was yeah have you ever cosplayed with a family member like a brother or a sister or anything as a matter of fact my wife cosplays with me she's oh, yeah. um she's a prominent member in our group and she cosplays as ada wong from the resident evil franchise um and, uh, so yeah, we. Um, oh, the girl also, who uh, like you want to kill. Of my, of my <laughs> yeah, I remember my friend played uh, <laughs> um, that. It was like, you're like that chick. What the heck? <laughs> Why did you just leave? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was no, like. It wasn't Ada. Ada. Ada never gets. Ada never gets killed. She's she's the. The femme fatale, she's like Catwoman. She never, she never gets killed. She always yeah. makes it out, and no, she always makes she, it. She out. works for Wesker some of the time, so no, yeah. it's kind of, kind of worked out for us in our marriage. Because in the nice. video game, she works for Wesker, so mm. you know, Wesker put a ring on it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, what, um, what is your favorite cosplay photo of yourself? Well. Like, there, um, it's funny. Um, I, I don't really, I never really minded um, how much I was in the photo, just the quality yeah. of the photo itself. So my my favorite would probably be this huge group photo we did. It's um, it's pretty much it's pretty much our best. I think I think I actually gave it to you yeah. to use for mm-hmm. uh, for advertisement uh, to, yeah. for the mm-hmm. promotion. But yeah, it was such a such a beautiful photo. It was um, yeah, I think the studio really was uh, Model Mosa or something like that. I forget his name, but uh, nice. yeah, we were at uh, we were at Fan year and this was a year when fan fest was being held at the uh, cardinal stadium in glendale yep so uh, they opened up like those uh they opened up like those hallways that are all just nothing but stone and uh and everything like that and so they opened those up for us to walk through and they looked so good with the lighting and we like we got to get a photo shoot here so Mm -hmm. we found that stairwell and we took that photo and um i'm at the very top like you know you can barely see me i'm i think only you can only see this this much of me yeah it's um even care it's such a good photo like all of us just pop and the colors and the editing it's just such a it's such a flawless photo it's like our favorite one ever <laughs> nice nice so uh what are your go-to stores for cosplay material you said uh goodwill is a good way to get you know your type of style of cosplay and where else would you feel is a good place um, other than goodwill i'd probably say um for a, specifically for resident evil characters we would probably definitely say you're a surplus store of any kind so mm-hmm. any of your local surplus stores uh, we would also we would also probably say places like walmart because you can you can get like a, you can get like a cheap pair of uh, military you know bdus there um and also oh, over at walmart yeah yeah Oh, I've never found any BDs. Like if you like if you go to the men's section, you know, and you like look through all the pants there, they do have uh, some plain BDUs and I oh, mean yeah. they're plain and they're cheap, but yeah. they, they 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 get the job done. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely those places. As well as Amazon, I'd probably say we get a lot of our stuff from Amazon. <laughs> yeah. I know I know it's pretty cliche at this point in history with COVID and everything to be like, Hey, we're <laughs> I am I'm, I'm getting my stuff from Amazon, but yeah, yeah. we do. We um pretty much have anything we could want uh, all of our props all of our uh all of our equipment that we can't find at a goodwill or a surplus store yeah no it's uh it's always fun to dress up because like uh i think there was one cosplay i was talking to that did csgo and uh i was like well where did you make all that i was like oh no no i bought this <laughs> over at army surplus stores <laughs> and everything yeah because that you know to make 
that would be tedious and very hard to do. So do you prefer to buy any wigs? Have you ever worked with a wig? Have you ever styled a wig? Or is it all natural? Uh, personally, no. Yeah. Personally, no. It's it's not au natural though. I, I basically I like actually I'm actually a dark haired brunette in real life. Mm. <laughs> so um, me, I actually use um, I just use uh, color color hair color spray. That's uh, yeah, an all natural one that works. Uh, I used to when I first started cosplaying. It was those ones you can get at like Party City, and it looked awful. <laughs> it pretty pretty much just made my hair like whitish yellow or um, yeah. um, or crazy like crazy like terrible like mustard yellow or awful but um i eventually you know found a pharmacy that had like um you know hair styling products and some of them were you know doing colors with your hair it was like a spray that uh, is instant blonde nice so um yeah so i got lucky with that one but uh, a lot of our members do use wigs though a lot of them um if they if their hair is just complete opposite of the character they want to be then yeah they do wigs and we, we have some really really talented uh, cosplayers who uh, help us out they style their own wigs and if you bring them your wig they'll do it for you and um yeah we're uh we're pretty big we're a pretty good uh, tight-knit family when it comes to helping each other out with our needs nice very nice so does your wife uh use her own hair when she cosplays as ava young young long um uh, as ava long <laughs> Like, <laughs> um, well, she um, she did at one point when her hair was the right length, but then once it grew, she's like, ah, no, I don't have it anymore. So she she does wigs now. Yeah. Um, eight is not that hard though. You need like just no. a basic yeah. um, basic basic dark hair, short of like you know shoulder like brunette style wig, but like black hair. Yeah. Um. So it's not not the hardest wig to get. So we we lucked out there. <laughs> yeah, not much styling needs to happen either. Yeah. Too. So that's good. Just put a, just put a brush through it. Yeah, exactly. So has anybody mistaken you for a different character? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> easily. It's like if you uh, if you go to a convention where you have um, you know a thousand nerds, but five thousand typical people who have never seen them seen a movie, a you know, superhero movie in their life. Um, you know they they see a character wearing shades, they're just gonna be like, oh hey, it's Neo, or hey, it's Morpheus, and yeah. All, all these matrix characters that's that's what i get the most yeah yeah exactly. and i'm just like okay i mean none of those characters are blonde and none of them wear anything that looks like this but yeah, exactly. okay yeah. and eventually like, i just did you not see the logo they're just like yeah yeah, like, you, just be, you, know. yeah. yeah you, you just get used to it and eventually you just um just get used to coming up with a thing you tell everybody in my case i'm just like I'll just say, nope, wrong franchise, but nice try. And then I'll be like, oh, what franchise? And I'll, I'll say, oh, Resident Evil. And then nine times out of ten, then I'll say, oh, I've never it. heard of that. What? <laughs> never heard of Resident Evil? Come on. Everybody's heard of Resident Evil. You know. So what are all the cosplays you've done? I'm sorry, all the cosplays that I what? That you've done. Oh, um, that I personally own... Um, actually have every iteration of wesker since he has about um nice. about he's about let's see one two three four about uh, five or six different outfits that he wears throughout the franchise nice so um yeah i i i, I own all of them i um, mean <laughs> took a long it took you know from from 20 from like uh 20 2012 until now to get them all together but uh yeah it takes i do i do all of his iterations yeah, and for Halloween parties, I'll do something else. Like I'll do, you know, a, a Batman character like Two Face or the Joker, or I'll uh, do something fun like that. But uh, as far as professional cosplay, yeah, it's every iteration of Wesker. And then for my group, we 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 literally do the whole spectrum of every character you could think of in Resident Evil. You know, you name the character, we got somebody who does it. <laughs> nice. So, what is the biggest con you've cosplayed at, or or, or you hosted, or whatever? Well, ours would definitely be Phoenix Comic Con. Um, it has, yeah. it's it's obviously had a few different name changes for those who don't know. But uh, yeah, um, the biggest one probably though, I would probably say was last probably last year's because um, we had our we had our most successful raffle, we had our okay. most successful panel. Like it was like it was. Well, I mean, I'm not going to say sold out because we didn't. It was it was free, but yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> all the all the people were. You know, there wasn't an empty seat, so our panel was our biggest ever, and 
turnout was our biggest ever and everything just went so well um so i'd probably say um i'd probably say last year's uh phoenix comic con or or phoenix comic fest as it was known last year i think now fan it's fest fan, fan fusion, fusion. Okay. well to every arizonian phoenix fan fest fan fusion is always comic con <laughs> legally we have to say fan fusion but to us it's our comic con um, but yeah, yeah I yeah. I totally understand about the whole panel thing myself. I've panelists on a few uh, uh, places over at Sabaton oh, Con, and uh, yeah, I know the feeling when you have a full oh, house. Cool. Then you're like, okay, this is cool. We have a full house. Now we're going to bring attention to our brand. You know what I mean? Um, Absolutely. So and yeah, you feel on top of the world. Yeah, for me personally, I'm I'm known throughout the Twitch community, Twitter and uh, Instagram community as Das Cosplays or Game Tees. Uh, those are my two monocles that I use all the time. And uh, oh. yeah, so but you know the thing is with um, with cosplay, it's it's always fun to go to com uh, comic cons or of some sort. And go to the panels and talk to people who have experience in this field. Um, so, have you ever lost anything at a Comic Con? Like a part of your props or? Oh, well, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Maybe, you know what, uh, what? What professional? What professional cosplayer hasn't right? But uh, yeah, we, we definitely we've definitely lost some stuff. Uh, it's never been never been anything major. I mean, we always um, we're we're really good at having getting all of our of our props and all of our sets and all of our gear and everything we're good at getting all that out of there so yeah that's uh we never lost anything major but that's had, good. you know we've had people like leave, yeah we've had people leave like maybe uh be like one of their pairs of sunglasses or mm -hmm. um you know a pair of like their like their backpack or something and they they would go back and they'd find it well that's good um but um yeah always always small knickknacks though nothing nothing yeah. crazy so, do you prefer cosplaying characters with props or without props? Oh, definitely with props. It's um, it's been rough for us because uh, our props are um, obviously, obviously ninety percent of them are going to be you know fake guns. And you <laughs> can't since, bring uh, those ever since, ever since Con convention, <laughs> ever since the convention center. Since that, that one guy ruined. It. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one guy ruined it for everybody. <laughs> but uh, it's been rough for us to go without our guns. We definitely, we definitely uh, would rather have them, obviously, because they make they take they look better in photos, make us look more legit. They make us look more like our characters because you know, Resident Evil characters they have very specific weaponry. They have very you know they have custom made guns that look iconic to them. Yeah. Um, you know, our nemesis monster he has a big old bazooka, and a chain gun, just like in the video games. And yeah. It's like exactly. you got all these all these weapons that look so cool, but we can't have them. But uh, mm -hmm. we've learned to evolve, though. We've learned to we've learned to you know be bigger than uh, our weapons, and that's that's yeah. part of, that's part of cosplay too. You know, you got to yeah. evolve. You got to take what life throws at you and keep going. Yeah, I remember when I was cosplaying as Deadpool. You know, I just bought the Deadpool cosplay over the internet, and uh, I bought the gun, and it's. It's kind of sad, but cool at the same time that guns are very realistic <laughs> nowadays. Uh, you take a toy gun, you take it apart, you paint it. And I have a toy gun that when you cock it back, it makes the sound. And you fire it, yeah, and it yeah, sounds just too. like a real gun. And you're like, oh, that's scary. Yeah, so I, I was walking downtown Phoenix <laughs> with Deadpool with all of his guns and all of his swords. Just walking to the convention center from my car and the cop pulled me over and he's like hi we got some calls i'm like hey go ahead search me and uh show you that that gun is fake please don't shoot me <laughs> you know so I've, I've i've been there done that with those fake guns uh that's the unfortunate thing with that prop is when it's realistic looking you can't take it in anymore um and that's not the that's not phoenix fan fusions rules that's the conventions rules you know uh anywhere that where a con is held uh it's just like the convention uh is set setting the rules so have you ever uh bought a cosplay piece at a con like where you're like oh that would be complete my cosplay uh, never uh never well, well actually yeah I, I was about to say no but uh i think i should take that back because um 
occasionally, occasionally we uh, our members do stumble across something that's Resident Evil, and what we do, we get all we we get hyped for it because um, surprisingly enough, you don't really see that much Resident Evil merchandise unless it's our booth. So yeah, um, we find something like uh, finding a badge or uh, uh, like a RPD Stars badge or or um, a name tag that has like their face and it looks like an actual name tag and. Um, we found things like that. We found decals. Nice. We found, um, you know, special artwork posters. Um, and it's like things that we just want. It's uh, like, you know, forget our cosplays. We're just like, we're, we're, we're Resident Evil fans. We just, we just want to have it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, preferably you guys like to cosplay in a group because as a group, you guys are a whole, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So when you cosplay solo, it's just like, oh, okay. But have you ever cosplayed solo, like for your own personal photo shoots? Uh, no. I mean, well, I mean, when I first when I first started in 2011, um, I went to cons not to not to be a cosplayer, but just to have fun. My friends were like, you know, hey, come and, uh, you know, it's like it's like a, the world's biggest costume party. And yeah, I think um, so back in 2011, it was my, just. Uh, for- yeah, exactly. And yeah, then, back in twenty. Point. Yeah, sorry. Go, ahead. go ahead. My fault. Oh. I'm, so, I'm sorry. The the audio thing, but um, but no, it was the uh, first 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 few years. It was basically just I just want to show up, take pictures, have a good time, and eventually I stumbled across Umbrella. You know, the, before I joined them, and uh, I was like, oh, I got to get pictures with all these people, and um, and then it's like, oh, you guys, you guys are hiring, and they're they're saying, yeah, we need a Wesker, and, and uh, from there it was magic. Nice. But uh, I never, I never, I never did. I never, I never thought I'd make it in a million years, and I'm, I still don't. For me, for me, it's still just about the about the charity work and uh, raising money and getting to spend time with the people I love. Yeah, that's the most important thing, and plus your wife does it with you as well, so you're keeping it in the family. So it's really cool um, because. I wish um, I was talented enough to be one of those people who make money right. from it, like Amber Skies, or there. I, I wish I was that talented or that versatile, but well, yeah, <laughs> sadly I mean, I'm not. So. Well, we that that's the difference between like what makes somebody a pro cosplayer and what makes somebody an amateur cosplayer or like a, a cosplayer himself. You know, a lot of people feel that a professional gets paid, and whereas an amateur is just having fun. Um, and I'm like, eh, you, you could be whatever you want to be in cosplay. And that's the great thing about it. You know, so, uh, have you ever like, of course you've done a couple panels yourself or as a group. Um, yeah. Panels you were talking about, what was the question for it though? Um, like, have you ever, uh, what kind of cosplay panels do you do? Okay. Well, our panels, um, weren't really cosplay focused ours were actually more of a game show uh type of panels because uh we wanted to um because umbrella we tried like at our at our genesis we tried to do ones that were um um like hey you know we want to tell you about our cosplays and tell you about surviving the zombie apocalypse and things mm-hmm. like that but it was um it was never they never those really never took off that much it was never um it was never a thing that was making everybody like oh i gotta go to that so thought you know maybe we should try things like trivia shows and things where there's prizes to give out you know audience members could participate they could win things get get the audience involved um other than just does anybody have any questions at the end so um yeah. you know, we did game shows um our one that we've been doing for a few years now is called horror horror jeopardy mm. um i was able to find you know um uh, build your own jeopardy program and i'm you know i've been nice. making Pretty programs um, to that you can put on your computer and then project on the, the on the big screens there at the the panel rooms and uh, mm-hmm. you know, set up the stage to be like a good the game show with with having three audience members come up and do the whole Jeopardy thing. Nice. Um. Yeah, those are the kind of things we do now. Trivia shows where people can actually have a chance to win something. And they've been a big hit. Like I said, our one last year it was completely you know there wasn't a seat left in the house and it was it was such a blessing. Nice. Very nice. So. Uh, if you could tell your past self anything about cosplay, what would you, what would you say to them? <laughs> well, uh, if it was my past self, I would definitely say, you know, <laughs> make sure you always have a bottle of water with you wherever you go. <laughs> you're cosplaying in Arizona. <laughs> Amen. 
Yeah, you're cosplaying in Arizona, man. And yeah, you're gonna if you're at least part of your day is gonna be outdoors. So <laughs> right, and that, that's something I tell all my members. And if we ever have an event, it's like, hey, stay hydrated, stay uh, safe. You know, even even before this pandemic, we were always telling people make sure you take your vitamin C, have your orange juice, right. have your uh, your things, stay stay clean, stay uh, organized. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just uh, practice good habits, I guess, overall in a nutshell. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, as a cosplayer, it's very hard to uh, remember to eat, to drink, to do everything because you're having so much fun communicating with everybody. And so somebody's like tapping on your shoulder, hey, you haven't drank water. <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's true. So what is your ultimate dream cosplay? Like, what cosplay would you feel that you're just like, oh, my gosh, I, I want to do this? Oh, yeah, that's that one. I don't know how many years off that one is, but it would definitely be um, Wesker's uh, monster form that he has at the end of uh, his final game, which oh, is yeah. uh, Resident Evil 5, where mm-hmm. you're fighting him in the volcano and he, like, covers himself in the, the virus thing that he created called Ouroboros and... It's like just covered in all these awesome like black slimy things and just like this he gets like a giant arm made of it and like um he gets like a really cool looking mutated face with the glowing eyes and stuff and all those other things and it's like i have the pants and the boots but you know now i just need that elaborate monstrosity that you have to wear right and could <laughs> yeah, you imagine that wearing be, that that would be awesome yeah that would be awesome would be but very hard to wear probably yeah so well, well, we have we have systems for that. Of I, course, I'd be prepared. We just keep it backstage until it's showtime. <laughs> of course. So, um, what um, what is the biggest cosplay con that you've been part of? Would it be Fan Fusion? Would it be the biggest one? Yeah, definitely, definitely Phoenix uh, Fan Fusion or um, you know Comic Con as it was known or Comic Fest. It's definitely mm. our biggest one because. You know, we're we're only the Arizona Hive. Yeah. So you know, we haven't we haven't we haven't gone to anywhere else. I mean, we have gone to a convention in California, technically. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it was it wasn't a big one though. But I would definitely say either if it wasn't if it wasn't Fan Fusion, I'd probably say like um, Game On Expo. Mm-hmm. Um, that one started small, and it's got to be a huge con. And you know, we're we're getting pretty much a guest of honor at every one of those, and which we're so so blessed uh, for. Yeah, um, it probably be it probably be that one if it wasn't fan fusion. <laughs> nice, nice. So, um, of course, like you prefer to buy pieces of your cosplay to complete it, right? Instead of like making it and sewing it by hand and everything. <laughs> well, some things, some things, it's uh, it's good if you can. We got we got some members. They did they did put together their their own things from scratch. And, oh wow! You know, props to them. They they wanted it they wanted it to, to be completely one hundred percent their own creation. So it literally it literally depends on the cosplayer. It depends on their talent. It depends on what they're capable of and what they're willing to learn. What they're willing to go down to and. Uh, yeah, for a lot of us, it does end up though where it's like, okay, I only have a, I only have a month till the con. I don't have, mm-hmm. I don't have the time, but I do have the money, so I'm just gonna buy it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that's the one of the hardest things about cosplay is trying to get the time, the energy, the the experience to be able to do the, do that. Um, the outfit behind me is the the outfit that my wife made for herself uh, for Renfair, and uh, she made it without a pattern, without anything. I was like. Whoa! <laughs> and that's where that's where I was like, "Hey, can you make me a cosplay?" <laughs> uh, it's people with that talent is it's such a remarkable thing. Um, so, what is the most co- um, difficult cosplay that you've done, in your opinion? The most difficult one. Um, well, definitely. Certainly for Umbrella, our most difficult one will always be Nemesis. Um, Nemesis. That one was, took so much construction, so much work. Uh, yeah, yeah, Nemesis. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the most recent Resident Evil game, Resident Evil 3 Remake, he was mm-hmm. the main monster in that game. And uh, Yeah, we, we have one. Uh, we, we have two guys who are tall enough and strong enough to wear him all, <laughs> wear him wow. for long periods of time. But, uh, it was such a pain to make, you know, because it's like multiple huge leather leather pieces that we had to like 
uh, sew, sew and stitch buckles onto and metal metal pieces and stuff that click into each other. And that's just all the leather pieces. Then we have yeah. like you know, special leather sleeves we had to make, special buckles, special dozens of pieces that all have to be put together on him each time he suits up. And then exactly. um, the latex pieces, like the mask, which is the most difficult one. We had to make that out of latex and rubber and all these other pieces and paint it and stuff. And it's um, so elaborate, but yeah, <laughs> it's like you put that on at the end and it all is a, just a huge, huge cornucopia of pieces that make a really cool cosplay. And he's, he's definitely our biggest one, hands down. <laughs> yeah. Um, that would be like really difficult to be making or heck even to, to wear for that long. You know, you see these people with full body armor cosplays uh, walking around in Connie. Like, how are you doing inside of that cosplay right now? Uh, uh, so, uh, in well, your they usually have handlers. Like our, yeah. like our nemesis, he has a handler. Mm -hmm. We'll have we'll have one or two members go with him and guide him because he can barely see out of that thing. Yeah. So I can definitely tell you all the all those giant cosplays they they're not doing it by themselves. They definitely have handlers with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you're know, like, yes, I look cool, but I cannot see and I can barely breathe. <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh what is the most uh difficult character makeup you had to do? Would that be Nemesis as well or No, cuz Nemesis doesn't need any makeup. No, he doesn't need makeup. It's mask, just latex uh, and yeah, uh, just just the mask. You know, the mask covers the entire face. It's you know, it's the whole monster. And mm -hmm. uh, so no, his doesn't need any makeup. Um, I'd probably say, probably say the most difficult makeup would probably be our uh, zombies. We have a we have a few uh, different people who are really talented makeup artists, and uh, they do their own zombie faces. But they do some pretty elaborate designs. They um, we've you know one of our members uh, she is able to do like these huge like like uh, slash marks across her face and. Mm -hmm. Um, like, um, you know, one person was able to do like, you know, peeling skin and all these, um, you know, really elaborate, um, things. So I'd probably, I would probably definitely say our zombies as far as makeup goes. So what is, uh, your charitable organization? Like, what is your main objective for it? Ours is always going to be to raise money for the Arizona Animal Welfare League, which is the largest no-kill shelter in the state. Uh, part of the, um... It's like um, Arizona Animal Welfare League and SBCA, uh, something something like that. But um, yeah, we've always been we've always been up for um, you know saving saving and helping people who can't help themselves, and that obviously applies mo mostly to animals. There's so many of them out there, and it's like they'll they'll be sent to a shelter, but eventually they won't find anybody, and they'll be put down. And it's a uh, that's that isn't that just isn't right. So we we found AWL and they said you know our our thing is no matter what we will find a home. You know, we'll keep the dog or the cat. We will keep them until an owner comes along. We will we'll, we'll bust our butts to get them a home and keep them in uh, keep them in comfortable air conditioned facilities that are that are good for them and giving them everything they deserve. And it's it blew our minds seeing their facilities and seeing how good of a job they do. And it's like not that hard to just do right by the animals you know so we're we're saying you know we're, we're raising for them uh but we are charity which means that uh if another if another worthy cause comes along and asks for our help you know we'll, we'll do something for them we'll, we'll donate something to them we'll we'll have some sort of a fundraiser for them we'll, we'll do something it's uh primarily yeah it is always going to be a, a awl nice so um have you ever met um uh, like an all-time favorite cosplayer and like uh, um, all time, all, all time favorite who cosplayer? Like what? Who's your favorite all time cosplayer? Like you're like I want to meet this person. <laughs> well, I would probably say one of our one of our biggest names that uh, we were excited to meet was uh, Leon Chiro. Mm -hmm. He, um, I've probably heard of him, the Italian cosplayer. Yep. Um, we were really big into him because, uh, yeah, because not only does he do all the ones he does amazingly, but he also does Leon Kennedy from Resident Evil, and he does him, you know, pitch perfect. He's got, he's got the big old muscles, he's got the, he's got the hair, he's got the face, you know, he's got all of it. So we were excited to meet him. Uh, we got to meet him at Sabo. Uh, one of our members actually, she got to work for him as his handler. Oh wow. Um, yeah, well, I don't think she's a member anymore though. I think she, I think she retired. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, this was back when she was still with us and. 
and uh, she, uh, yeah, she was his handler. She's like, hey, you know, I'm hanging out with Leon Shiro. We're like, oh my god, you're so lucky. Yeah. But, um, yeah, exactly. we waited our turn in line, and we all got to meet him. And um, you know, some of us came dressed up in our Resident Evil outfits, and they got to get pictures with him. And yeah, it was definitely iconic. So I'd probably say, uh, as in terms of popularity, I'd probably say that he's our biggest. But uh, ones that uh, we wanted to meet, wanted to meet the most, were definitely the big Arizona names. You know, we always wanted to meet Amber Skies. Mm-hmm. Always wanted to meet Amber Bright. We always wanted to meet uh, Courtney Lee, and then you know her and her boyfriend. They were members for a while with our group. Nice. Um, it's like um, yeah, we we just it's like um, you see these people on Instagram and Facebook and stuff, and it's like yeah, local Arizona names, but they're big. They they're popular. They got really awesome cosplays, and it's like oh, I get hey hey hey, we're we're setting up at a con, and there they are at their table setting up, and it's like hi. <laughs> nice. That's always fun to meet uh, people who have the same vision as you as well. Um, so what, what is your favorite part about cosplaying? A favorite part about what? Cosplaying. Okay, well, <laughs> favorite part about cosplaying? Probably, definitely probably the family aspect because uh, – like I said, you meet so many amazing cosplayers, but even in your own group, though, you make you make friendships. You make you make some real connections. You you build some relationships that last with you forever. Um, I met I met my wife through Umbrella. You know, we oh, met okay. we met through the through the group. So hmm. if it wasn't for Umbrella, I wouldn't have the life I have. I wouldn't have the life I have now. And so definitely definitely the family aspect, definitely the connections and the relationship part of it, because uh, um. We'll always have those few of those two or three out there who are distant from everybody and think they're above everybody, but it's like, whatever they, they get, they get left out in the cold and just the way they want it. But uh, Very nice. everybody who's everybody who's warm and warm and welcome and inviting, which is like 99% of cosplayers in Arizona. It's like, if you get, you get close with them and you build friendships and relationships that last you the rest of your life. Yeah. And you know, you're currently cosplaying as, um, I'm butcher his name again, Wester. Right, Wesker. Wesker, you're cosplaying as Wesker from Resident Evil, uh, and um, yeah. and the the whole um, the whole character in in itself has a huge backstory, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a huge backstory dating dating all the way back to the early '90s when Resident Evil first came out. You know, I think it was like '96 when the first one came out. But uh, uh, char- characters that have had a ton of backstory and a ton of history revealed over the years, and uh, yeah, Wes- Wesker's is no different. His his story could definitely fill a book, just like just like all the characters, obviously. But yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, right. that's one of the things we love about Resident Evil is that every single character has a story to tell. No, and do you feel that as a cosplayer, do you feel there's a a huge community out there that are helpful and willing to help out there? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've we've gotten help a lot. We've uh, we've gotten uh, cosplayers to help out with uh, projects and and uh, you know put them tag themselves in our social media and uh, spread the word of charities and things like that. And we've had um, you know people. Uh, um, so many, so many really amazing cosplay photographers reaching out to us and be like, "Hey, you know, uh, be sure to, I'm gonna see you at this event. You know, would love to get some free shots of you guys and give them to you." And um, nope, we lost him for a moment. Yeah, sorry. Okay. It's uh, for some reason. It's all right. Let me see if I can pull it back up. No, you're there good. Go. <laughs> no, uh, technical difficulties have to happen. You know, that's the the glory of everything so what would you say is uh your best moment in cosplay best moment um let's see well for the for the group as a whole i'll probably say um man, because there's so many uh big moments that stand out to me but um of course to pick one of them i'd probably say when uh, i'd probably say when sony uh contacted us uh because oh wow um, sony contacted you hmm? yeah um i mentioned this at the beginning but it was uh, it was very brief but uh basically it was when resident evil the oh, final yeah. chapter was yeah. coming out uh yeah the the final movie and it just out of nowhere this uh this lady with sony emailed us and 
at first we thought it was fake. We thought it was like junk mail or a spammer or yeah. you know, somebody who was faking it. Um, we were afraid to respond, but we said, okay, we'll just, we'll just ask for details and try to keep it, you know, not giving her any information about the group until of we course. know it's legit. But, uh, but yeah, she confirmed everything with us and she, she provided all the legitimate things we needed. And we're like, we, we realized, oh my goodness, we're being asked to help Sony out with promotion for <laughs> the actual Resident Evil movie. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, they, they said, they said, uh, there's this event and this event happening in Arizona this month. I'd like you guys to go to both of those and, and uh, pass out the stuff we're going to be sending you. And, um, yeah. we would like you guys to arrange with uh, one of the big theaters to be at the midnight premiere. And, yeah. um, so, uh, so yeah, a few days later we received a package from them. It was a huge box that was filled with posters, filled with t-shirts, filled with so nice. much stuff. And uh, we said, yeah, obviously we're going to we're going to do this. So we went to each of those events and uh, walked around, you know, just walking up to anybody, really being like, hey, you're a Resident Evil fan. You know, the new movie's coming out and here, have a poster, have a shirt. Um, and it was it was just such a blast. And then all culminating in us being at the the Arizona Mills uh, IMAX for a midnight premiere night. And, you yeah. know, all of us were all of us were lined up to the, the movie with our with our weaponry and stuff, just like uh Looking like we were guarding the theater and uh, spooking yeah. all the people coming in. And, nice. Um, yeah, I yeah, think it was um, a huge moment. Yeah, I think that at the beginning of the 2000s, like early 2005, 2006, cosplay was just coming out. Like, and really, people were dressing up more and people were uh, participating more with it. Because before, if you dressed up, for an event, you were the nerd, you were the outcast. Uh, now here we are in 2020, where if you don't dress up at a con, then you're the outcast. <laughs> you're the weird one. <laughs> you're, what are you doing, normie? <laughs> you know, type of thing. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> right, exactly. Because uh, the great thing about cosplay is, you know, it's it's always fun. But now, one thing that I've noticed in Arizona community of uh cosplayers is the whole uh body positivity and it's like it doesn't matter what size shape you are you're going to be able to be a cosplayer you're going to be able to have fun and uh that that's a good thing because um a lot of people today they they're ashamed of their, what they look like and everything they want to make the character as real as possible and uh yeah it's it's interesting to see that um so what do you think is um, the scariest thing about putting together a cosplay? Um, well, definitely, I would definitely say it's probably the for the first time you wear it in public because uh, uh, you know you you spend all this time doing it, you spend all this uh, money and work and time, and you know you're happy with it. You look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, but then, you know, comes the day when you're actually going to wear it to a convention or wear it to an event. You know, and you're you're like, okay, I'm, I'm about to step outside my door wearing it. And then, you know, it's like um, you want to you want people to like it. Um, and it. And it will go it will go one of two ways. You'll either have um, a good a good number of people who stop you and want to photograph. Yeah. And in that case, you're on cloud nine, or it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. You walk around and nobody nobody recognizes you. You know, you don't get a single photo, and you just got to take it on the chin. You know, it's like yeah. all of us have been there. It's, no, multiple <laughs> and people. Yeah. It's just one of the things you got to deal with. No, yeah, exactly. I remember I was a uh, Spider Man one convention, uh, and I had to go get gas, and I was in full Spider Man gear, gear, and uh, so I was like, forget it. I'll wear the mask, too. And so I went into QT, paid for my gas, and this one guy looks at me and goes, why? And I'm like, why not? <laughs> why? I'm going to a con, man. And uh, everybody, everyone in QT was yelling at the old guy that was like, why? And he's like, they're like, why not, man? He's rocking that suit. <laughs> he's and that, that's the good thing about uh, cosplay is uh, people – I've had kids come up to me and, like, I've heard cosplayers who, like, kids come up to them and say, you're my favorite hero in the game. And it's really rewarding. Um, yeah, and, but, yeah, I think, I think the scary thing is uh, what your neighbors will think of you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not necessarily. I mean, uh, 
peer of you do it's one of those things you're friendly to them they'll be friendly to you you know exactly so, yeah like i said 99 percent of the time you're going to get a cosplayer who's friendly and happy to happy to meet you and they, they might not know what you are but they'll, they'll still be happy to yeah. meet you nonetheless so <laughs> yeah exactly so, I mean, yeah making, taking that first step could be rough but uh you know it's just one of those things you gotta you gotta take that first step you gotta take that leap yeah it's like um with you working with a charitable organization you know you bring uh you you bring smiles to people's faces when you guys do your charitable work right you know like like you said you went to you went to the event for the parade for the kid you know and uh that was a that was a lot of fun yeah it's fun and like i've known other charitable organizations that do the same thing and they bring smiling faces to everybody and that that's the joy of what people do when they have events like this is you know it's all about the people it's all about the getting the the joy from the other person um so it's always the pain in cosplay yeah it's uh, yes granted everybody wants to be that cosplayer that gets paid fifteen hundred dollars to be a host over at you know comic-con or something or get that all expense paid trip to disney me because they have a amazing cosplay you know everybody wants that of course you know but the good thing is uh, you have fun. I, I think that's the biggest thing. So what would you say um, is your next project? What would you say like your next project would be? Well, um, like, you know, yeah, like we currently are focusing well, I'm for like uh, a costume. Are you going to stick to West Wester? Yeah, yeah, I'll be sticking to Wesker as far Wesker. as uh, my cosplays go. I don't, need, I don't need to do anything else when it comes to when it comes to my my group, my cosplay group. So we have uh, we have some members who are uh, working on some characters that they want to be. We have mm-hmm. uh, a couple of our girls who are wanting to do uh, certain uh, iterations of Jill Valentine, who's mm-hmm. pretty much the biggest female in the franchise. Yeah, one of the biggest females in video games. Period. Yeah, uh, yeah. We have a couple members working on iterations of her. Uh, with Umbrella, though, some of our big, next big projects aren't even cosplays at all. Like, we have a lot of new uh, props, new sets in the works that we're wanting to do to bring to with us to events to make it more interactive for uh, oh, nice. visitors. Um, yeah, a lot more fun stuff. We got more projects of that coming. Uh, one, of our, one of our guys who does Nemesis, you know, he hopes in the future to someday get to put together his own version of uh, Mr. X, who's the... A big, tall, you know, trench coat wearing dude in Resident Evil Two remake who's yep. like chasing you around the police station, which is scary <laughs> as heck. Yeah. Oh yeah, he wants to do that, and uh, we got a, we got a couple of our of our cosplay members who are working on you know fixing up some of their cosplays they have already, like our uh, Chris Redfield and our Barry Burton. Um, they're they're working on sprucing up a couple of theirs. It's um, it's more of a case of not you know really making brand new ones, but you know fine tuning the ones that we have basically. Yeah, makes sense. So, um, what would you say you're doing um, because of this whole COVID nineteen thing? Like, what are you guys doing as a charitable organization to still remain like current? You you know. With everything going on, because currently, because oh, yeah. what? Oh, well, um, we obviously have had to cancel a lot of things that we do every month in person. Like we, we used to meet up every second Friday of the month to hang out as a group and the word of downtown Mesa, but obviously that that hasn't happened for some months now. But um, we still make sure that every month we all have a have a online you know video meeting with each other and and keep in touch and uh, keep the keep the love and the community going. Uh, do a lot of uh, promoting on our on our social medias of things you know telling people to be safe wear you know wear your mask be uh, wash your hands um, you know definitely spreading the spreading the positive uh, messages people need to hear on all of our social media platforms. Uh, we also yeah. make our videos on um, our YouTube channel uh, that are also, you know, things that are Resident Evil themed, things that are fun for Resident Evil fans, uh, letting letting people letting people try to, you know, be part of it and submit their ideas for things. Um, 
then for events uh we still do things like we have our twitch channel that we'll do video games on that we'll play video games on try to raise money for the awl um any any small event that we could be safe at like this parade where we could just wear our masks and just stay with our vehicles um you know small events like that yeah. um literally literally anything that we can get our hands on that would be uh that would be compliant with uh, the current uh, predicament yeah, it's, um, this COVID nineteen has really hurt um, a lot of the the conventions and everything, and um, it's very hard to to have that interaction, that human interaction now, because everybody's worried that they're going into like a place where it's infected, or or they're going to catch COVID, or you know, and so we have to always shut down things that are unfortunate. Hopefully, cross your fingers that the infusion goes through, and we're able to do that. Of course, we have to do everything safely, and so. that that's the hard hard thing about it is is maintaining that thing. So, um, have you um, have you had the opportunity to uh, really grow as a brand branch, like because you're the Arizona mm -hmm. Hive? And so you have the Arizona Hive. You also have a Tucson Hive, I believe. Well, we're all one. Okay. If, you know, we have our branches in Tucson and our branches in Maricopa, but we're all we're all the same group. We're all one. Nice. Um, and yeah, we we've uh, we've come a long way. Um, yeah, we have about a hundred members now. Um, I mean, we have we used to have like maybe three times that many, but we had to do a lot of refining because most of them are just people who. Just wanted to be members, but not, never show up to anything. So we had to do a lot of uh, a lot of cutting, uh, cutting people out for attendance. But uh, yeah, yeah, we have about a hundred a hundred members now who are uh, who are all loyal. They're all wonderful people. They all show up to things, and just great. So yeah, we've grown to about a hundred good good members. Um, you know, the um, we can, we're becoming pretty well known. Uh, events. Uh, um, pretty much any event we go to now, the people will say, "Yeah, we 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 recognize you guys. We've at least we've at least you know they'll at least say we've seen one of your one of your uh, squad cars on the street. We've seen uh, yeah. your uh, your guys' merchandise. We've seen your guys' t-shirts. We've uh, you know uh, things like that. And obviously the big Sony thing that got us in with more um, you know um, advertising. Yeah. Um, and then of course um, our followers on all of our social medias are you know they slowly rise. Mm -hmm. um so it's like it's one of those things where you just you just keep at it little by little you get more and more people who know you and uh you know, it's just um it may be slow but it's steady and now, that's that's the way we like it we were we yeah. were never we were never in this to be uh we're never in this to become instagram famous and have a billion people you know yeah. follow us you know we're uh, we'd be fine if we had a hundred people and that was it but uh but we yeah. are well we are definitely growing we uh got a little over uh 600 people on instagram that follow us and nice about 500 people on twitter who follow us and uh um facebook's definitely our biggest one we got we got a, we got like some some several thousand who uh, follow us on there and very nice um so yeah we're, we're growing so slowly but steadily and of course on the youtube video uh, i'll put all of your links and everything like that on the bottom but um would you say like have you ever ran into like the legality of using umbrella corporation uh the name itself is it trademarked is it like you know it, it's i don't know no it, no just uh just using it as a just using it as a name is uh nothing wrong with that at all we've we've good. never been we've good. never been approached um which is good um it only it only ever becomes a problem if you actually if you actually try to license it as your own thing and try to mm -hmm. make money off that but uh we have, we've never done that. We've only ever just used the day. We've ever just, you know, used the logo. Mm -hmm. um, but but always, it's it's always good, uh, us telling people that we are nonprofit cosplay for charity based yeah. on the Resident Evil franchise, you know, yes, which, is, which is by Capcom. So yeah. it's always remained theirs. It's just, uh, it's just we're, just, we're just dressing up as their characters, basically. <laughs> but, you know, the good thing is that Sony reached out to you for when the movies were popular and, you know, hopefully... If they uh, decide to make another Resident Evil game, then you, know, you guys can be part of that too as well. Oh, well, they are. They are. We've uh, we've and we've been part of that too. Uh, last year, the Resident Evil Two remake, uh, GameStop mm -hmm. invited us for the midnight release. We all nice. We all went there and uh, and gave, gave all the pre cop pre uh, the pre orders out to all the people showing up. We handed them out to people. That was a big thing. 
we're going to do that for Resident Evil 3 as well, but, you know, COVID. Um, COVID, fun. That, that ruined that. But, uh, yeah, we got we got a couple new Resident Evil games on the horizon. Resident Evil 8 was announced. Mm-hmm. And we can't wait for that. Now we're going to, obviously, hopefully COVID's over by then so we can do a GameStop event there. Exactly. And then uh, Resident Evil, they're doing a remake of Resident Evil 4. Yeah, we we got we definitely got games on the horizon, and uh, there's even uh, there's even um, well more than rumors at this point. I guess I guess it's in production, but they're making a reboot of the Resident Evil movies. And uh, this time mm. they're going to make it more closer to the games, which we're excited oh, about. You know, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, they've they've uh, they've, re- they've even released some of the uh, official casting so far. We're we're happy with it. You know, Brendan uh, uh, Bretton Thwaites, who's uh, Robin on that uh, Titan show. Mm-hmm. Um, you know he he's going to be Chris Redfield, and we're like, wow, that's that's pretty that's pretty darn good. And uh, that uh, that chick from that horror movie Crawl, uh, we're uh, escaping the alligators and stuff. She's yeah. uh, she's going to be Claire Redfield, uh, which is awesome. So, yeah, we're 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 excited for it. We hope it happens. Yeah, because I think every uh, Resident Evil nerd, uh, when the first Resident Evil movie came out, we were all like, wait, what? Wait, this isn't the game. <laughs> So why why would you make a movie that's not? Huh? We accept the movies for what they are. We yeah, are they're we entertaining are, with me. Yeah, you'll convince. Uh, obviously, very obviously we're never we're never gonna say we're never gonna say they're good movies. We'll never say that. But we'll, no. we'll, we always we, 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 we accept them for what they are. They're they're fun zombie movies. You know, yeah. you bust out you bust out the beers and the <laughs> and you just have a good time watching a zombie movie. Yeah, you know? exactly. We never, like... never go to their high art. It's like first it's movie she first movie she's a klutz and she's like barely can do anything. Second movie, third movie, soon like l- later down the line she can shoot fire from her hands. So I'm like, wait, what? What? She's <laughs> gone. She's god by the end of the movie. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty crazy. But um so usually and this is where we leave it up for uh, the viewers in the, in the chat for any questions that they have. Um, but we only have one viewer, so uh, we'll just skip that and <laughs> just go on to other uh, questions. Um, so, what is uh, now like? What what is one drawback that you don't like about cosplay? Um, well, let's see. A drawback about it. That's a good question. Um. I'd probably definitely say the heat because uh you know, we've, we've never had any bad experiences with the the people visiting us or the people interacting with us we never had problems with that and uh, anything with the cosplay world but i would probably just say the heat being a being a group that wears military gear and tactical gear and black uh, black outfits and things like that it's like being that kind of a group in a state like arizona it is it is brutal sometimes but uh it's worth it but yeah. Probably be the the biggest the biggest drawback. <laughs> yeah, I agree with the whole military gear. When you're standing in the heat with military boots on, and you're just standing out in the sun, your feet feel like they're melting into the concrete <laughs> or into the asphalt. Um, because military boots aren't fun in the sun. Um, well, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you taking the time to talk about your charity and and uh, you personally as a cosplayer. Um, and any last words, you know, like that you want to say, um, before we end the video? Um, yeah, uh, you know, it's been, it's been an honor. It's been an absolute pleasure being here with you. Uh, we're very glad that you, uh, thought of us to let us be on this with you and, uh, wish you all the best. And for those of you watching, whether it's here right now on discord or whether it's in the future on our YouTubes, be sure to check both of us out you know check out our man here our cosplay interviewer game (laughs) tease make sure you follow him and make sure you follow us at umbrella corporation arizona hive on uh, all social media platforms or just at az hive you know come follow us come check us out we got lots of fun things to see and do and commune and uh, commune with so it's been a pleasure thank you so much all right well thank you so much all right take care (laughs) all right you have a good day thank you you bye So, with that, we will end the stream. Thank you again for uh, joining me during this time. And uh, if you have any further questions, the links are down below of our Twitch channel. Thank you so much for stopping by.